Hi guys, thank you for joining the session. My name is Jenna Woroviro. I am a data protection associate at Something Tech Limited. Mm -hmm. uh, so today web today's webinar is brought to you by Southern Tech and a company called DC. So DC is essentially a company that offers um, software software products and their main uh, their main product uh, is called the GOD platform which will be taken through um so our speakers for today uh our speakers for today we have miss brenda gabantu miss brenda is an advocate of the high court of kenya she's a data protection and privacy practitioner uh, so Ms. Brenda will be taking us through the legal basis for processing personal data, what is personal data, what are the rights of a data subject, what are some of the principles, uh, the principles in data protection and privacy. And she'll also be taking us through the legal frameworks that regulate matters to do with data protection and privacy. Um, Ms. Rixa Sakib will be taking us through now the practical aspects of data protection and privacy. She'll take us through data discovery, classification, mapping, and then at the end of the session, we should do a live demo of the GOD platform so that we can have an idea on the practical aspects of managing personal data. So I'll let Ms. Uh, Brenda introduce herself and then we can start off the session. Should you have any questions, feel free to uh, write them on the chat, then I'll read them out at, uh, at the end of Ms. Gabantu's presentation. Okay, so thank you so much, Jane. Can I just want to confirm, can you hear me? Am I audible? Uh, yes, yes, we can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, um, I hope uh, that goes for the members who have joined us for this webinar. And um, as Jane has rightly said, I am Brenda. 
uh, data protection and privacy enthusiasts, uh, having been privileged to be a member of the task force that formulated the regulations and the act, and therefore I'll be taking you through the you know, the just the overview of the act. So there's a lot uh, in depth, but we will just go through the overview and um, share what Jane has said. So Jane, you can start me off with the slides. Okay, so just okay. where to start from, data protection and you. Um, many people ask themselves why data protection, why are we regulating personal data? It's because data protection is a human rights issue, protecting people's privacy and more especially personal data in this regard is a human rights issue. I don't know if you have ever felt violated or um, um, embarrassed in any way maybe you've gone to seek for a service and you find yourself that you're not too um, happy about how you are handled or what happened to you because of maybe how your personal data was used. So in, it's very much important to protect uh, personal data and to realize that people have rights in regards to how their data is used. And therefore, anyone who is processing personal data must comply with the data protection law. Um, sorry. I just want to confirm if you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you, friend. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. So as I was saying, data protection is very, very much important. And I know many of us here in Kenya have experienced instances where you go to a place and you're, you know, you're trying to apply for a job and uh, your personal data is, um, maybe you're asked for certain kinds of data and uh, some of it you may feel is excessive, some of it you feel um, it's really not necessary, but you don't know what to do, you don't know how to go about it. So with all that, data protection came in just to regulate how people handle personal data. Um, I don't know if you can see the screen, I've been asked to proceed. Well, Brenda, um, I'm not your screen right now. Okay, Jane was sharing on my behalf. She's asked me to proceed. She's had a technical hitch, so I'll just proceed. I hope that uh, when she's able to, we will uh, be able to follow one another from the screen. Another example I really like giving is, how many times have you talked to somebody, a friend, just about something, maybe shopping or um, buying something. And all of a sudden you find all your social media platform, things are popping up. Maybe you talked about shoes and all of a sudden ads of shoes are popping up or maybe it's a wedding you talked about and all these ads are popping up on your screen. And sometimes it feels as though somebody somewhere is listening to you or listening because how come you would just mention something and all of a sudden when you're online, it's coming up. So those are some of the few things that help us to realize the need to regulate um, personal data. And um, I'll just go right to it. So why must we protect personal data? Personal data, number one, above all else, it's a legal requirement as we speak. Since the act came into place in 2019, it's now a legal requirement to protect personal data. It also promotes good information handling practices. It protects business reputations. 
it um, gives individuals awareness of their rights. And of course, it because of being a legal requirement, it's regulated. So therefore, investigations and audits will be carried out by the office of the Office of the Data Protection Commissioner, in short, the ODPC. And then for any violation of personal data, of course, there are these lit you face litigation, you face fines, and I'll, um and I don't think any business wants to get into a space where they get into this every now and then. So um so what is personal data? What is this personal data that uh, we're talking about? Jane, if you can move to the next slide. Personal data is any information, any information relating to an identified or identifiable natural person. This could be um, records, this could be HR documents, and we know these are your name, basic documents that our HR collects, our name, our address, our beneficiaries, mm. our IDs, our professional certificates, our payroll, um, company details, um, maybe your cust as a company, your customers, um, research information. So long as it's it's relating to an identified or identifiable natural person, this all accounts for personal data. It could be the images taken by the CCTV, could be emails, it can be online identifiers, genetic data, biometric data, photographs. The list is very, very broad. It is very broad. Anything that relates to an identifiable person is personal data. And it refers to individuals. So therefore it doesn't refer to data of companies, data of say maybe robots, data just um, think about you as a person and any data that relates to you. That is personal data. Uh, it can be in automated form or it can be in a manual form regardless it's all considered to be personal data. And um, the act is very broad. If you read it, it, it lists uh, in section two, it lists um, some components of personal data. So um, going to sensitive personal data. So we have personal data, which is basically name, ID, phone number, email, and I could go on and on, clients details, financial details, um, your location, where you stay, GPS, biometric, genetic, iris data. I could go on and on, it's very broad. However, when we come to a category we're calling sensitive data, uh, of mm -hmm. course, sensitive personal data, this relates to a category where data must not be processed unless allowed for under certain specific circumstances. And this is usually um, where consent is supposed to be obtained explicitly. So here we have your race, ethnicity, and for us race may not be such a big um, deal, but when we think about ethnicity, you do know the impact um, ethnicity has on on this country, especially when it comes to, um, you know, elections, employment. Think think about how ethnicity has really um, impacted the society we live in today. So that is considered to be sensitive personal data, your political opinion, your religious or philosophical beliefs, your property details. So if you have learned somewhere, that data, that information that relates to your property details is sensitive personal data, your spouse or spouse's details, your family details, your children details. That's why nowadays we are being told stop posting 
uh, your children's details on 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 social media. You know, you post your child in a uniform. We can all tell the school they are going to, and you find some people are going and kidnapping these children, all because you are able to share very sensitive information about where your child is going to school, the name, and somebody just approaches the school and says, I've come for Jaden Maina, and and indeed, there's a Jaden Maina, but, you know, this person is not in any way related. So all those details are considered sensitive personal data. Genetic and um, genetic and biometric data, we remember the data that we were taking, we take during um, application of passport, application of IDs, any fingerprint details, all this is person um, sensitive data. And then we have health data. I cannot belabor, belabor how much health data is, is sensitive. I don't think there's anyone on this platform who would um, be very comfortable their health data or their health status being shared even to you know you know you wouldn't want somebody your your health data is very personal and private your sexual life is also private it's also sensitive your your sexual orientation is is another private issue that's why you hear people saying, "Oh, um, I'm coming out of the closet." This is this is a these are issues that people think they should be in the closet. So you can imagine how private that is. So all this and many much more, and I'm sure you can think of so much more data that you would consider sensitive. However, under Section Two of the Data Protection Act, it lists what Kenya views as sensitive personal data. And again, I'll say this is a category that should be protected explicitly with um, after obtaining consent. Who are the key players in data protection? Uh, if you can move on, we have the data subject. This is an individual, this is a natural person who is the subject of personal data. This could be a student, could be staff, could be respondents in a research participation, could be your customers, could be the public. Anybody who is the subject of, of personal data is a data subject. Who is a data controller? A data controller is a natural or legal person. Could be a body organization, an agency who determines the purpose and means of processing of personal data. Who is a data processor? A data processor is more like the agent of a controller. This person processes data on behalf of a data controller. So moving on, I'm sure this will uh, come into perspective as I go on. For processing is, what is processing? Processing, just as I've said, a controller processes, determines uh, the means of processing. It means any operation performed on personal data. It could be collecting, recording, organizing, structuring, storage, altering, transmitting, transferring, uh, distraction and erasing the data. So if I come to your company and at the front office or even at the building, somebody collects my data, maybe ask me for my name and ask me for my the details of my ID or even at the gate, all what they are doing is called processing. And then maybe say I get into the building and I proceed maybe to the front office and they collect further details to enable me maybe to check if my I have an appointment. All that is um, processing and maybe they store my details for future use. Maybe should I visit the building another time? So they keep my details. All that is processing. Or they transfer my details to the next office to say, hey, 
Brenda is here to see you, they transfer that detail to the next person. All that is called processing in the life cycle of data. Or they decide, ah, we don't need this data. Maybe I've dropped my CV and um, it, my application was not considered. And they decided we do not have space to keep all these papers. And they decide to shred the information they have about me. Even that is a processing. So it's pretty much everything we do with personal data on to the next thing and I'm moving like this and I'm not going into so much depth because of time however this is the the legal framework we have for data protection in Kenya we have the constitution of Kenya we have the data protection act of 2019 we have the access to information act and the computer misuse um Act. So let's go to the Constitution. Under Article 31 CND, it's very clear and explicit that everybody has the right to privacy. And this is a right under that Article 31, which states that um, the right to privacy is protected, including prohibition of unnecessary disclosure of family or private affairs or privacy of their communication. So everybody has the right to be protected, their family, their aff affairs, and even their communication. Sometime back, we had this um, narrative that somebody was listening to our conversations or the government wanted to listen to our conversations. I don't know how true that was or if it's true, but however, we do have the right to be protected under the constitution. And we know that the constitution is the supreme law of this land. And then when we move to article 35, again, it says, you have the right to correction or deletion of untrue and misleading information. So if you have any untrue, for example, if and here I'm not talking about maybe articles that have been written by bloggers or maybe a scandal or maybe somebody posted something untrue about you. I'm talking about um, that notwithstanding, you can always get redress for such things. But here I'm talking about, say your ID is reading uh, something else, your birth certificate, you know, you have the right to correction or deletion of uh, untrue, misleading information. That about um, untrue stories being shared about you can be corrected or deleted, but it also has some guidelines and principles of how that can happen. And then um, we have the Data Protection Act, which came in 2019, it gives effect to Article 31 of the Constitution. So it established the Office of the Data Protection Commissioner, whose sole mandate is to protect uh, the privacy of individuals and offer remedies for any violation under the Act. So it provides a legislative framework for protection and regulating of regulating the processing of personal data. It gives data subject rights and it sets out obligations and uh, yeah, it sets out obligations for data controllers and data processors. So for anyone who is processing personal data, um, you need to conform to this act. Uh, this act also has regulations under it, which were developed in 2021. So meaning right from 2019, when the act came into place, anyone who violates um, the privacy of another, especially with regards to personal data, is liable for any fines and, and for that uh, violation. So we have three regulations that are under the Act. We have the general regulations which um, set out 
rights and obligation and uh, issues to do with consent. And then we have the data protection, compliance and enforcement, complaints handling and enforcement procedures. Sorry, this, this should be complaints handling. Uh, I will change that. Yeah, so that regulation sets out um, how the ODPC handles complaints and what are the fines, what are the, uh, the fines for violation, how they will go about to enforce data protection. And then we have the registration of data controllers and data processors, which sets out the requirements for a registration as a controller or a processor. Let's move on. So when processing personal data, you need to understand that you can only process personal data of somebody if they have given you their consent or you're performing a contract or you're under a legal obligation to process that data. Like the courts are under some obligation to process a personal data or you're protecting the vital interest of a data subject or you're carrying out a public task and it is your task. For example, you're the attorney general and you read and under your office, you, you, you register, um, sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, so under, yeah, under your office, you're obligated to publish the names of, uh, of um, maybe those who have registered for marriage just for people to be able to state uh, that this person has not contracted any other marriage. So you have to put up the names on a notice board of a public nature. So somebody cannot say that you cannot process my data or you're doing some investigation with the police, the DCI. You can also process or collect personal data without because you're carrying out a public task. So um, these are all reasons or you're a business for legitimate interest, you process personal data. So I've said everybody, anybody who processes personal data must have these reasons at the back of their mind for processing personal data. So it's either by consent, it's either on by contract, it's either by a legal obligation, it's either by a vital interest, a public task or a legitimate interest. And I believe we will share this slide so that you can, you know, follow through. So when processing personal data, the next slide, I've just tried to explain a few of what I have said. Yes, so that is um, some of the examples uh, you can look into if you're processing personal data. Let's move on to the next. So under data protection to help uh, institutions know how to process personal data, they have to abide by certain principles. And the principles are, are as you see on the screen, they are explained uh, in the next slides. Jane, you can move on so that I can explain. So um, you must process personal data under the principle of it must be a lawful uh, purpose, it must be fair, and it must be transparent. Nobody should process personal data for any illegal purpose. I always give the example of you cannot be running um, a brothel. I believe it's illegal in Kenya or you're trafficking humans and you, you say that you're processing their personal data and you're even heading to the office of the data commissioner to, to get a certificate to process their personal data. Already that's an illegal activity you cannot process or you go and buy people's data so that maybe for your own uh, purposes, you can begin sending them messages 
without you having sought their consent or even you're not doing it based on a contractual obligation or a legal obligation or a public task, that is already an unlawful way of processing personal data. So usually, um, I, I believe you've seen when you're browsing some website, they're asking you to accept, they're asking, they're um, and showing you a privacy notice just to, to accept, or sometimes you're browsing and you can see accept cookies or manage cookies. All that is somebody trying to ask you for your consent to process your personal data. Then we have purpose limitation. Only process data for a particular purpose. So it, if you've collected data to offer me a certain service, only process it for that purpose. Do not repurpose or collect data for processing that you have not, that is outside your purpose. Then you data minimization, only collect, limit the data you collect. Or if if I'm coming to your building and, and maybe you're the security company, there's no need to ask for my ID and my name and also my marital status. It's, it's really not any of your business because for security purposes, you only need to know who I am and maybe to which office I'm going to. So be very clear on the kind of data you're collecting. So minimize what you do not need, do not collect it. And then your data must be accurate and then you must have some storage limitation. Do not store data for, for perpetuity. You must be very clear on how long you're going to store the data that you're collecting. Then we have integrity and confidentiality. The data you keep must be of um some of not some must be in must have integrity. So you must ensure that your records are as clean and they are, you know, they can they they state the facts the way they are. And then accountability, uh data um controllers, processors must must demonstrate that they comply with um, with the with the law and one of the ones I've mentioned is the GDPR. This law impacts us because many institutions process data of European citizens and uh, I believe even Briska when she'll be demos doing her presentation, she will mention that you can see that clients are not only local, but even foreign clients. So you must be very clear about the, those such kind of laws that uh, may impact you, even as you're a controller or a processor in Kenya. Then some of the duties the, the controller and processor have is the duty to notify, uh, notify the data subject of the rights they have, Notify them of the personal data you're collecting. So if you're collecting my name and my ID, please inform me. Inform me of the intended purposes. Inform me if you're going to transfer that data outside Kenya. Inform me if um, there are any other institutions you're working with. For example, where I work, we were being asked for to share our... Um, birth certificates and IDs, and we had to be informed that this may be shared with the, I think the registry of persons for purposes of verification. So inform the data subject, inform them of the, of the security safeguards you put in place to protect their privacy. Again, the data subject has rights, can move on, Uh, they have rights, they have rights to access their data, they have rights to restrict or yeah, you to process their data, they have the right to object to you processing. And remember processing, I said, is collecting, uh, retrieving, transferring, sharing, all that. They have the right to 
do to rectify their data. So if my ID is reading something different from my birth certificate, I have the right to approach the, the, the necessary body to correct that. I have the right to portability, porting my data, moving my data from one controller to another controller. I have the right to ask you to erase my data or delete it. I can come to your institution and say, please, um, I would like you to delete the data you have of me from your systems. So um, all this are, are well explained and elaborated in the law. So you can look at the general uh, regulations or data protection. They will go into in-depth of uh, the guiding principles when a data subject is exercising their rights. Uh, on to the next thing, we have the obligation to register. And this I thought to mention it, it's very important. All data, sub all data controllers and data processors must register. And this commenced on 14th July, 2022. So we are two years into the registration. Um, so if you are here and you haven't registered, kindly look into having this done because it's a, a compliance and legal requirement for you to register if you process personal data. And at South End, we are here to help um, assist you in doing this. And then we have what you can consider. Uh, you can, as a data controller or a processor, you need to appreciate, that is the next slide. You need to appreciate the, the obligations under Data Protection Act and see how, and embark on compliance. And that's why we are here today to talk to you about the the practical aspect and that's what um, my co-facilitator will be doing shortly in the in a few minutes and then take into account the principles and the rights of data subjects and then report data breaches to the office of the data commissioner and then cooperate and then look at section 41 very clearly to see the data protection principles what are the recommended safeguards and what uh, should you do when you process personal data? And then look into issues of uh, data protection impact assessment. There are very, very um, elaborate provisions on what it means and uh, how you can comply with uh, data protection. And if we can move on to the next slide, and to the last slide where there is way forward because of time, uh, what should you do as a, an institution? Set up policies and guidelines for, and guides for of how you collect and process personal data. Ensure you have a data protection policy. Ensure you have a data classification, know the kind of data that you process, you collect? Is it health data? Is it property data? Is it children's data? And and I know that G GOD, the company that uh, RISC is going to talk to the platform, and I'm sure they have um, a tool that managers can help you uh, do this classification of data. And then have data handling guidelines, have data breach uh, code practices, your contracts with the processors or the third parties, how do you contract them to deal with uh, any business that you give them that is related to data protection, have da data protection officers or champions, and then Ensure that you're clear on if you're transferring data outside Kenya, how do you manage that? Staff training and management, which we do very well at South End, we can do this for you. These encryption services, look into how you can get um, this kind of services. And I know Risky will be talking about this. And then um, 
have some provisions that are specifically tailored to your institutions with regards to data security. I would like to end there because of time. You realize that I've not been able to go in depth. There's still a lot. And if you're interested in now going in depth to this, we are available to um, tailor make sensitization um, uh, forums that you can be able to take you through the in-depth of the, of the framework of data protection. Over to you, Jane. Um, thank you so much, Brenda, for that informative uh, session. So if you have any questions on regarding what um, Ms. Gabantu has uh, presented on, feel free to unmute and, uh, and ask the questions. Alternatively, you could um, write them at the chat session. I can see Festus Mbati asking, could you please share the presentation paper after? Yes, we will make the paper um, available to you. So I think I'll hand over to Ms. Rixa to um, take us through the practical aspects of data protection. Yeah, thank you so much, Jane. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Rixa Sakib, and I'm the sales specialist here at DC Software. Today, I'm pleased to have the opportunity to talk to you about our solutions and tell you how we can help uh, in complying with data protection laws that Ms. Gabantu has just shared. So do let me know if my screen is visible to all of you so that I may proceed. Uh, is Jane, is it visible? Uh, yes, it's visible. Okay, wonderful. So DC Software is a Turkish software vendor company. Our headquarters are here in Ankara and we have worked with many different companies all around the world. Till date, we have around 200 customers from various different industries. And we've helped them comply with various different data protection laws that I will be talking about and taking you through. So just a couple of names uh, regarding our references internationally and here in Turkey as well. So we have worked with Carrefour. We have worked with multiple banks here in Turkey. We have worked with multiple ministries, municipalities, the national budget of Nigeria, the Ministry of Agriculture in Croatia, Iron Mountain in Saudi Arabia, Teleperformance, Topnet in the Gulf region as well. We have worked with the biggest asset management firm here in Turkey. We have a user uh, who are using our data classification solution and discovery solution in their platform for 40,000 users. So truly, the magnitude of users that we support is unlimited. And the minimum number of mm -hmm. companies, I mean, the minimum number of end users that we're supporting is 20. So do not feel like we are excluding anybody out from our services. A small company or a big company, both can make use of the modules that we are providing. So the biggest USP, the biggest differentiating factor that makes us stand out in the market is the fact that we have an all-inclusive data protection solution. So what do I mean when I say all-inclusive over here? You may look at this diagram and get an idea. So basically, we have a modular solution. This means that we're providing different modules for your data management and data protection needs. The first module that we are providing is the search module. The second module is the discovery module. And then we also have remediation techniques. And those remediation techniques include data masking, include data encryption, and you can also classify your data. Furthermore, we are also providing data analysis tools and face recognition tools as well. So when I say modular, what I mean to say is that our clients don't necessarily have to purchase all these solutions at the same time. They can purchase a single module as well. They can purchase them in pairs. They can purchase them in bundles and they can keep adding them on as time moves on. So it's all customized for the needs and requirements of each user. We are extremely uh, flexible to how our customers want to work and also in many countries, it's necessary for such solutions to be on-premise solutions. And DC software is providing Judy as an on-premise software for data protection. So you do not need to worry about complying with that regards as well. So now I will move on and explain each module in detail. I will also give you use cases and examples as to how other firms are using our module with regards to data protection. I'll begin with the first module, which is our data search module. 
So our data search module can basically be seen as your company's internal Google. So what this means is then we consolidate the data that you're holding from different data sources of yours. And some of the data sources that I can highlight would be your databases, any CRMs that you're storing data from, any file servers, share points, share folders, any CAD files, photos, videos, any data that is present on your PCs, Mac, Linux, and so on, even website directories, data from your emails, cloud storage spaces such as Google Drive, and so on. So what we do is, is that we create a digital archive for you. We create your very own Google. So we have a patent solution for our search bar. It's AI and NLP based. Within seconds, you can search for any value that you're looking for throughout your data lake. For example, if I'm searching for the name Jane, I will type it on my search bar like I would on Google. And within seconds, Judy will show me where Jane is present throughout my data lake, whether her name is present in some database, whether her name is present in a document, whether it's part of a PDF or it's part of the title of a document. Everything will be shown to me on my homepage like it would on Google. This would make great sense once I take you to the live demonstration it's, itself and show you how the search module is operating on the GOD platform. So feel free to ask me questions and I will elaborate on those. So now I will be talking about our data discovery module, perhaps one of the most essential modules when it comes to compliance with data protection laws. As Ms. Brenda uh, successfully explained, we help comply, we have helped comply, uh, we have helped companies comply with GDPR, PCI DSS, HIPAA, which is a Health Protection Act. We have helped them comply with LPGD, SAMA, CMA, PDPL, CBO, CIO. So these are different names of data protection laws that we have helped our customers comply with. But now you might ask me, what differentiates us from other data discovery tools in the market? And that is a question that I really love answering because we have Samantha data discovery, semantic data discovery. So this is a solution that we have made ourselves to ensure that the false positives generated with our data discovery are to a very low. So what this means is that we can understand data, whether it's written alphabetically, numerically, whether, whether you're using symbols to write it, the regular expressions that we use to create recognizers to find sensitive data in your documents are also very strong. We judge the keywords in your uh, documents as well to understand whether there's a possibility of sensitive data being present in the document. And the plus point that you get with us is the fact that not only do we discover from structured data, but we also discovered from discover sensitive data from unstructured data. Certain examples of unstructured data would be CVs, maybe receipts. They could be anything that is not you know, labeled as to how you can understand what is going to be present in the document itself. So I can give you examples for recognizers that we have created. We have created ID recognizers. We have created credit card recognizers. We can find the CVVs of credit cards, the passwords of credit cards. We can find pins for credit cards. We can find IBAN numbers. We can find zip codes, postal codes, addresses, phone numbers. We can also find email IDs and so on. We can find personal names. We can find money values such as any currency, euros, dollar, Egyptian pound, pound, rupee, Turkish lira, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the type of sensitive data that we help our customers find from their data lake. Now I would like to give a use case scenario over here that helps you understand as to how our existing clients are using the discovery module. So the second biggest bank here in Turkey, Rockefeller, is using our data discovery module to comply with PCI DS. So they need to find CVs, pins, credit card numbers, IBAN numbers from their data. So what we do is, is that our discovery solution scans their data lake for this type of data, and then we generate a report. In the report, we tell them what non-conforming data they're holding, moreover, where they're holding that non-conforming data, whether it's present in their SQL server, in Oracle, whether it's present in file servers, it's present in PC. We are giving them complete awareness of their data lake in a single report that they can come take a look on and then they can even print it out to discuss with their C-level employees and so on. So this is how the data discovery module operates. And what differentiates is 
differentiates us is the fact that it is semantic in nature. So this means that the false positives are going to be very low. We are not going to miss any sensitive data that we've created recognized for from your data lake. So that is a huge selling point when it comes to uh, GOD. Moreover, we also have a classification suite. So as I mentioned before, GOD is an all-inclusive solution. Usually in the market, you will have to indulge with a different vendor for your data discovery module and your data classification module. But with GOD, you are receiving both these modules on the same platform. So we are saving you multiple working hours. How is our classification solution different than any other classification solution in the market? We have plenty of reasons as to why you should choose GOD over any other regular classification solution. And the first answer that I have to that is the fact that our classification solution is present both automatically and manually. So this means that you can also have a hybrid model. You can classify your documents manually as well. And if you wish, you can classify them automatically as well. It depends on how you would like to consider the classification module. Now, I would just like to briefly explain what classification <laughs> is so that if there is anybody over here who's unaware of such solutions, they can understand what the classification module actually does. So in your company, you are on a daily basis, you are saving and sharing multiple documents, multiple files. And these files can be very sensitive. And you might want to make sure that there is no data leak in your environment from your work stuff. So that is where you require a classification solution such as ours. What we do is, is that depending upon the policies of your organization, we label a document with a classification group. So this means that, for example, if a document has a money value of more than $50,000 and an I banner, I should classify, my classification solution should classify that document as a confidential document. That is the rule in my organization. So what my classification module will do is, is that it'll scan a document before you save it, before you print it, or an email before you send it. It'll understand what type of information is present in that specific document or email, and then create a classification label for that specific document. So according to the rule in my computer, or my organization, any document with a money value of more than $50,000 and an IBAN number should be classified as a confidential document. If this type of information is present, then GOD will successfully classify that document as a confidential document. And then that is where we are integrating with DLP solutions such as Digital Guardian, Safetica, Symantec, Forcepoint, Trend Micro, Palo Alto, McAfee, and any DLP solution that you're using. We integrate with them so that the DLP solution ensures that any confidential document that you have created or email that you have created cannot be shared with, for example, anybody other than the C-level employees in your company or anybody outside your own organization. So this is how our classification solution ensures that your data is safe, it is protected, and it is not shared with anybody who should not have access to it. Our classification suite currently operates on Windows. So Office, Desktop, and OWA are all operational. And moreover, another plus point that you receive with our classification solution is the fact that we can classify legacy data as well. So any data that you were holding before GOD's classification solution is installed can also be classified. Because not only are we classifying data on the go, but we also classify data at rest. We also have activity logs. These activity logs basically tell you what type of classification activity has been going on in your organization. So you can always keep a check on your employees as well and understand what type of documents it is that you guys are creating. So these were some plus points of our classification solution. Once again, I will take you throughout these, I mean, through this Zoom session, I will take you to understand and show you the live demonstration as to how each module operates. Now I will move on to the next slide where I will be presenting the remediation techniques that we offer. The first remediation technique that I would like to shed light upon is our mass mm -hmm. mode. So say, for example, we have found non-conforming data in your data. We have found CVVs, we have found credit card numbers, we have found IBAN numbers, ID numbers. This is all sensitive data that you're holding of your customers, your employees, or anybody. And this is the type of data that you are not allowed to hold if you want to comply with the data protection law. So what you can do is, is you can choose to mask that data. 
So your document will stay as is, but only the sensitive data, the non-conforming data will be masked. So this means that you will be complying with GDPR or PCI DSS or any other data protection law that Ms. Brenda has shared with us today. Other than that, we can also encrypt the non-conforming data. So what this means is that we will help you create a four-digit passcode, and whoever has access to the passcode will be able to see the data that you have encrypted. You can also quarantine the data. So the, a use case that I can share for this is internal audit departments of companies sometimes have not decided as to what they want to do with sensitive non-conforming data that they're holding. So what they can do is, is that they can quarantine it to a server of their choosing and keep it safe from anybody's reach. This way, nobody will be able to access the data till they have the uh, till they have decided what action they want to do with the data, whether they want to keep it as is, whether they want to delete it, encrypt it, or mask it. And all these actions can be done in batches as well. You do not individually need to go to each database or each document to mask it or to quarantine it or to delete it. We can create a script for you, and within one click, you can do all these actions. So that is the ease that GOD is providing to its users. And another fun feature that I would like to bring to your attention over here is the ability to set alarms. Now, this is one of the features that we are giving to our customers for free. These are features that we've added on over the course of the last eight years that we have been working on the solution. We have added these features to make sure that our clients have a very work-friendly software. And these features are I mean, they play a huge role uh, in helping us retain our clients because these are extra things that they get with GOD. We have the ability to create alarms, which means that you will be alerted any time a specific type of data has been entered in your data link. For example, if I want to know whenever a money value of more than $1 million has been entered in my data link, GOD will automatically notify me that Rixa, money value of what more than $1 million has been entered in your data lake, you may take a look upon. It. So this way, I will stay on top of my work. I will not have to remember checking for something on a daily basis. Geody will be doing that for me. Just like this, we have added many more features to the GOD platform, many different dashboards that we've added to the GOD platform, which I would love for you to experience and to use yourself as well. We offer a POC period as well, where you can try the GOD platform in your own environment and see its capabilities, use its modules, and understand how your work life would look like before you actually purchase the software. So if anybody is interested in the POC uh, period, the POC process, do let us know after the session, and we can get it arranged for you as well. Now, just a quick recap of some extra features that we're offering, some extra modules that we have to offer. These modules include the face recognition module, the object recognition module, these modules have a whopping success rate of 97%. So security departments in our customers' organizations can make excellent use of such modules. And we also have a GIS module. So the GIS module basically extracts geolocations from your documents and displays it on the map. So whether you have photos, videos, images, or even uh, postal codes, zip codes, parcel numbers, phone numbers, and so on, all of that can be displayed on a map. If you have floor plans, they can be displayed on a map. This is not uh, the topic of discussion for our uh, webinar today, but these are certain extra modules that we have to offer. So if you are ever interested in knowing more about them, you may email either me or Ms. Jane or Ms. Brenda, and we will get back to you. So as I said, I'm stop sharing my screen now and take on any questions that you may have before I actually take you to the live demonstration of the GOD platform, where I will show you how each module is actually operating. So I will just stop sharing my screen. If you have any questions, do share them with us and our team will get back to you. Okay. So, would you please? Yes, we can share the presentation. Uh, now I will start sharing my screen and we may move on to the live demonstration where we can see how the GOD platform actually operates. So Jane, do let me know if my uh, screen is visible to you. Uh, yeah, yes. 
feasible. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask on both Ms. Brenda's presentation and Ms. presentation. Thank you, Jane. All right, so this is my search bar. I will search for the name Troy over here and press enter. As you saw, within seconds, Judy successfully scanned all my data sources and told me where the specific query that I've searched for is present. So as I can observe from this area, Troy is present over here in this database, in this database over here in an address. I can always judge from the search engine also because it's classic so that I can get better information about what it is that I'm searching and where it's present, how it's present. Let's observe this order form. A feature that I would like to bring to your attention over here is the fact that we are also automatically telling you how many similar documents you're holding to the document that you're, that you're opening with the percentage of similarity as well, as well as if there is a duplicate document. So again, these are special features that you will only get with GOD. Now I will open this order form so that we can analyze what type of data is present in the order form. As you can see over here, we can see an email address, we can see a name, we can see a telephone number, we can see a card number. So just from the looks of it, this document looks like a document that is a sensitive document. If I press this eye icon over here, I can choose to mask the document. So now we will test the masking module to understand how it's operating. There are different options that are presented to me over here. I can choose to mask the personal data, the monetary data, the financial data, or I can choose to mask everything. Now, you may also read the word anonymize. Anonymization is a new feature that GeoD has in, I mean, recently introduced. It's part of the eighth version of GeoD, where we will anonymize your data. So for example, you can see this card number over here. If you choose to anonymize the card number, then we will generate a dummy card number in place of the actual card number so that you are complying with whatever law it is that you are supposed to comply with. But you can also understand what type of data was present over here before the document was actually masked. So this is a feature that can come in handy on a daily basis. Just for explanatory purposes, I will choose to mask all the uh, sensitive data over here. So monetary, financial, and uh, personal data. Before I show the masked version to you, I would just like to also show you the ability to take a note on documents. This is another feature that Geodi offers. So I will right click anywhere I want to take a note. I will go here, I will tag any colleague of mine who I want to share the note with. And as soon as I press OK, my colleague would automatically be notified via email that Riksa Sakit has taken a note on the order form sample number one and the note, the body of the note. And then this enhances communication within the organization as well. So once again, another feature that you can use on a daily basis that we are just providing to you so that it's friendly environment. GOD is a place that you that's very user friendly. It's beginner friendly. We are providing all trainings and support as well. So it's not going to take you much time to acquaint yourself to the software. Now let's observe the order form and see how our solution has successfully masked. So over here, I can no longer see the email. I can no longer see the telephone number. I can no longer see the card number as well. All the masking features can also be customized. Say you want to see the first letter of the email. You want to see the first three digits of the telephone number. You want to see the first four digits of the card, card number. Or you want to use different symbols for masking. That's, that can all be catered to your uh, needs and requirements as well. For example, for this customer, they wanted to mask the first name, but they wanted to see the surname. So that is how the masking module is operating. We generate a copy of the original so that no confusion is created. You can simply go and delete the original yourself as well whenever you wish to do so. So that was from the masking module. I would just like to go back again to our GOD platform over here so that we may see the different type of dashboards that we have to offer. If I go to this dashboard over here, we can analyze and see the correlation between different data types that I'm storing. So with my main query of Troy, I can see that there are money values linked to it. There's uh, a personal information linked to it, certain dates linked to it. There are certain emails linked to it. So if this was something that I was overlooking, this module can help me understand what type of information I am missing. So this is just 
extra features, again, keywords over here that are correlated to my initial search query of joy. Now I will just, okay. Now we will go back to the content type. Let's observe over here what's present on our left. Data source that we are taking data from. So currently we are taking data from these file servers. We are taking data from these databases. You can add your own, obviously. We are taking data from emails, any email that you might be using, and even cloud storage spaces. These are the discoveries that we have created for this specific project. This is for GDPR and HIPAA. So two projects included on this platform. So our customers wanted to find personal names, phone numbers, skills, different users. They wanted to find emails, different money values you can see over here, different types of currency. They wanted to find different types of credit cards. An array of credit cards is visible over here. So now I will go to my discovery panel over here, and we can observe the type of reports that Judy has generated automatically. So we are doing scanning of one terabyte of data on a daily basis to discover sensitive data within your data lake. We also have incremental scanning. So this is something that helps us stay up to date and it helps us give you awareness about the type of data that you're holding. So over here, we have identified how much data we're taking from different data sources for this project. We can also go and analyze regarding the recognizers. This is perhaps the most important discovery report that we are creating. We are telling you, according to the recognizers that we have made, made over here for this project, how many emails we are containing, where the emails are present, whether it's present in my database, whether it's present locally, whether it's present on my PCs and all. So I can judge over here what type of data it is that I am actually holding. So this is how the discovery module is operating. You can create your own recognizers over here. We can have Kenyan ID card numbers. We can have Kenyan phone numbers, any other countries, SSN recognizers and so on, social security numbers, any recognizer that it is you want us to create. It can be customized for your needs and requirements as well. We have a ready-made solution for GDPR, so that can also be consumed by our customers. Now, I would just like to show you how classification is operating. So this is a document that I've created. I would just like to re, uh, reinstate the different uh, classification labels that we have over here. So for confidential, you can read the rule over here that my company and organization has created for us according to our policy. So any document that has money value of more than $50,000 and commercial and financial data should be considered as a confidential document. Any document that has at least two personal information, for example, telephone number, personal name, email, email ID, and so on. Any two personal information mentioned together in a document should be considered as a PII document. And for restricted, just any commercial or financial data. So for this document, I have an IBAN number and a small money value. What I will do over here is, is that I will change the money value and make it bigger than $50,000. Then I will go and select automatic classification just so that we can analyze how GOD's classifier is actually successfully classifying the document. So as you can see, this document now successfully has been classified as a confidential document. So that is how the classification module is operating. You will have to classify a document before saving it, before printing it, before emailing it. So GOD will not let you save, email, or print a document before the classification has been done. A pop-up will appear, and it will ask you to first classify the document and then do whatever action it is you want to do upon it. And we will observe that now once I will be sending this email. So I will change. Oh, okay. So now I will send the email. As Now you can see my GOD DLP add-in will come. And first, it will ask me to classify this email. Now, because I have a hybrid classification module present in my computer, I can either manually classify this email or I can automatically classify the email. And according to the rules of my organization, again, GOD has successfully classified this email as a restricted email. Even if I try to manually classify this as an unclassified email, as you can see over here, I'm not able to do so. GOD will prohibit me from classifying any document lower than the actual classification label that should be allotted to it. So now once I press OK, the email will be sent. That is how the classification module is operating. And now I would just very quickly like to take you towards my PCI DSS module so that we can observe 
how the reports that we have generated are being used by our customers. So for PC IDSs, you are not allowed to hold CVVs, pins, passwords, and different credit cards. So for this specific project, we created these recognizers for them, and we are telling them what non-conforming data they are holding. Moreover, where they are holding the non-conforming data is also mentioned over here. And then we have created these scripts for them. So just by clicking over here, they can encrypt all the non-conforming data, or they can delete all the non-conforming data. They can quarantine it, and they can also mask it. So these are the actions that GOD allows our customers to do very easily. Our customers can easily comply with data protection laws using our classification module, and they can also make use of our discovery and masking modules. We are also providing data search module, as I've shown to you over here. I will just stop sharing my screen now. And we would like to take on any questions that you have for us. And please do share your remarks with us as well. If there is anything that we can help you with, we will be more than happy to do that. We would love to host you for one-on-one -on -one sessions where we can talk to you about your specific needs, guide you as to what type of modules you are to use, and discuss how we may move forward with this uh, data protection uh, activity of yours in your organization. So please do let me know your thoughts and uh, I'm ready to take any questions now. Um, there's a question from, I think, I believe it's Festus, if I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. uh, he's asking if GOD is built on Microsoft. Yes. So our classification solution works on Windows, but our discovery solution can work on any operating uh, service. It can work on Mac, Linux, and so on. We can uh, discover data from your databases, cloud storage spaces, and uh, Oracle, SQL servers, etc. Um, Alicia, I will share the presentation with you guys after the session. Yeah, we will definitely be sharing the presentation with you as well. And um, any other question, Jane? Any more questions? You can also ask questions on the theoretical aspect, uh, meaning what Ms. Gabantu had presented on. Um, so I believe there are no questions. So I just want to thank Ms. Uh, Brenda Gabantu and Lisa for the amazing for the amazing presentation. Thank you, English presentation. Um, I second that statement. It was very informative. Uh, so thank you uh, so much, Ms. Brenda. I don't know if you're still online. Maybe you could just give us uh, in less than two. Two five seconds, um, just a brief overview, and then Ms. Ritsa, you can take over so that we can close the session. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for attending to this. Um, we are happy to continue the conversations yes. on how we can comply with data Brenda. protection. Hi, Brenda, just a minute. Um, uh, Festus is asking, uh, this question is directed to you, Rixa. Yeah. Apart from data management, can GOD be used as office management app? Um, not really, actually. Uh, office management is a different thing. Regarding data management, we are helping you uh, to search for documents, as I've displayed over here. And also, we are generating these reports that give you awareness about the type of data that you're holding. So if office management is looking for such actions, then yes. But otherwise, I mean, um, that's not a solution that is offered by GeoD. We specialize in data protection mostly. Thank you for that response. Ms. Brenda, you may proceed. 
thank you so much, Jane and Riska, for the you know the insight and the opportunity. As I said, um, this is an opportunity for us to continue the conversation on how to comply. And um, Miss Riska is um here for us, and we are able to marry how their platform can help us to comply within the Kenyan context. You've seen that she's they've been able to assist um, different companies in the EU to comply with GDPR, to comply in the US with the HIPAA, their act. So even as in Kenya, we are excited and we hope for you know, more engagement on how we can marry that system to help us comply with the Data Protection Act in Kenya. Thank you. Um, Ms. Luxo, you may give us your parting shots. Yeah. So once again, from my side, we are more than happy to help any customer, any partners that would like to get more information about how our solutions are helping you comply with data protection laws. We would be more than happy to host any with you for uh, one-on-one -on -one sessions to tell you as to how in specific you will be making use of the GOD platform you would love to meet you, love to talk to you about all this stuff. You are more than welcome to always view our website to see more information about our references, to see more information about how the platform actually works and what software, I mean, what abilities the software boasts. You are more than happy to reach out to me as well with any queries that you may have. You may feel free to send them our way. Any questions, any uh, I mean, prerequisites that you would like us to share, any presentation document and documentation you would like us to share, I would be more than happy to uh, send them your way. So once again, thank you so much for your attendance. Thank you so much for giving me the platform and the opportunity to talk to you about our solution. I hope that this session was also beneficial to you and was a good use of your time. We hope to host you again very soon and to see you again in the near future. And that's all from my side, Jane. Thank you so much. So we, uh, we believe we can close the session. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Until the next one, have a nice um, rest of the day.